Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the launch of this Make It Smart Hub, developed by the Construction Scotland Innovation Centre in collaboration with Inverness College, University of Highlands and Islands, and supported by two other Scottish innovation centres, the Data Lab and Census. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Andrew Nurse, and I am a programme manager at the CSIC. I am delighted to welcome you, the audience here today. Many of you are based in the Highlands and Islands, but we also welcome those from outside of the region who are keen to engage with you. I am delighted to be joined today by a number of local experts who are Georgie Parker of Inverness College, Stephen Hutchin of the Highlands and Islands Enterprise, Claire Campbell of Pretty Thistle, Matt Stevenson of Ecosystems. In the background, we also have Danielle and Kirsty working hard behind the scenes to help ensure everything runs smoothly. Before we get underway this afternoon, I also need to highlight some housekeeping points. Firstly, the session is being recorded today and the presentation will be available in about two days time. All participants will be on mute for the duration of the webinar, but I do encourage you to ask questions throughout using the chat box. We will try to answer as many as we can during the Q&A session at the end. Your feedback and opinions are extremely important to us, so we will note each and every question. And if we don't have time to answer them all today, we will endeavour to incorporate them into future communications. There will be interactive polls displayed on your screen during the webinar. Please answer them and we will display the results for everyone to see. This will also help inform the direction of travel for the hub itself. So now I'm going to share my presentation screen with you. Is that okay? Can you see the presentation screen? Thanks. Before I explain more about the hub, what it is and how you can benefit from being a part of it, I must first acknowledge the sponsors of an AMCF project. The Make It Smart Hub for Manufacturing and Construction SMEs in the Highlands and Islands AMCF project is part funded by the 2014-2020 European Structural and Investment Fund. The support of the Scottish Government and the Scottish Enterprise and the Highlands and Islands Enterprise is also gratefully acknowledged. I just wanted to start off this presentation by explaining something about construction. There's some large numbers in the top left hand corner there. And to emphasise what these means, construction underpins all other economic activity. We all need somewhere to live and somewhere to work. And it implies about 10% of the total Scottish workforce. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the rest of the numbers. What I did want to do today though was to emphasise that CSIC supports a UK-wide ambition to adopt more, more methods of manufacturing for construction itself. In the last five years, um, CSIC has been successful and there's some impressive figures there that emphasise the story that we could tell. However, today is not about what we have done in the last five years. It is about what we want to do in the future. And as you can see, CSIC is placed near Glasgow, uh, in, in Hamilton, near Glasgow, and we've been well served by companies in the central belt. We do acknowledge, however, that there's a lot more that we could do in the rest of Scotland. So therefore, joining forces with the Inverness College, University of Highlands and Islands, gives us access to, to the Highlands and Islands, as will be explained shortly. So what is, what is the hub? 18 months ago, CSIC set out on a vision to engage with more businesses in the Highlands and Islands. Early ideas centred around getting some mobile equipment that could be transported on the road to meet and engage local companies or organisations to understand their particular challenges and indeed promote their ideas and successes. By developing into a partnership with Inverness College and the award of European funded, we have now expanded our vision of 18 months ago fourfold. 
having a physical presence in Inverness, serving as a gateway to the rest of the Highlands, is clearly an advantage. And with the expertise of the college in serving both manufacturing and construction sectors, we too can work in both areas. We are now ready to roll out our hub, a free to use service for manufacturing and construction businesses to use. We invite you to engage with us and collaborate with each other. You will see listed on the right hand side there some of the key themes that we will touch upon. The list, however, is not limited to those that you see there. We welcome your ideas. We find ourselves hopefully at the back end of an international pandemic. Our vision remains to get out on the road to share innovations, disruptive ideas, and demonstrate some of the latest technologies available. Whether this is at exhibitions or trade shows, or indeed in your very own offices, we remain committed to fulfilling this vision next year in 2021. There will be four ways in which you can get involved in the hub. Today we launched the online portal, the first of these, and a bit more about that in a moment. It will be the gateway to collaborate online with other local businesses. We will also, in the, in the rounds at the moment of buying new equipment, we plan to demonstrate some of these via live feeds from our premises at UHI or CSIC that you can watch online. When we have equipment and when we can transport it around offices, exhibitions, etc., we will do so in 2021. And then finally, there's some large pieces of equipment will be available for use at the Inverness College. And again, you will hear something more about those in a short while. What is it we're trying to achieve is to improve businesses in the use of manufacturing and construction technologies. If we can work together with those, we create better buildings to work in, a better built environment, better places to live and boost the local economy. So today, the website goes live. This is our innovation portal. And you can see the website address there and it will be made available in the chat, I'm sure. We invite you to register. Um, we need you to do this um, to satisfy the requirements of the project itself. But once you've registered, it opens up a gateway of information and some interactive elements of, of the, uh, the hub itself. We also invite you to register to receive our newsletter, which will give you up to date information as we progress. One of the key things I wish to promote now about the, the online portal, the innovation portal itself, is, is what we call a matchmaking service. This is where you can sign up as an organization and you can sign up in one of two ways. You could have a challenge, whether it's in manufacturing or construction, or you could offer a service as a solution to these challenges. So you could be an organization, business in the Highlands and Islands, and uh, you could have a construction challenge or manufacturing challenge. And we invite you to, to sign up for that, given as the, what is your challenge. Equally, you could be a company with a, a solution or service that could help these challenges. And we invite organizations outside of the Highlands and Islands to participate in that as well. The first of these will be on modular construction and there will be a webinar to launch this planned for the 25th of November. So please sign up for that, which I think will be available either later today or later this week. But I uh, encourage you to, to uh, sign up for that webinar, which will launch the matchmaking service. So now I'm going to hand over to the first of our invited speakers. Um, this is Georgie Parker, who is Director of External Relations at Inverness College. So over to you, Georgie. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Andrew, and hello, everyone. Thanks for coming along this afternoon. I'm going to tell you a bit about Inverness College UHI and how it's engaging with the Make, Make It Smart Hub project. So um, Inverness College UHI is a partner of the Highlands and Islands. We're one of the largest partners. Um, the Highlands and Islands University is made up of 12 colleges and research institutions spread across over 30 campus locations. With a student body of over 37,000 students each year, we're the largest in Scotland. 
Our students, though, are a bit different, perhaps, from other organisations in terms of their range. So they range from plumbers, hairdressers and foresters, right through to nurses and ecologists. We have the largest college contract for apprenticeships in Scotland, now valued at over 1.2 million, over half of which are employed in the construction and manufacturing sector. In terms of research, the last research excellence framework showed that 69% of our research was graded internationally excellent or world leading. Our research specialism quite, uh, specialisms are quite often focused on issues that are important to the future of the Highlands. And at Inverness College, we have two knowledge transfer projects going where graduates and our research staff work with employers to find innovative solutions to business problems. In construction, manufacturing and forestry, we have over 500 direct apprentices ranging from foundation apprenticeships right through to graduate apprenticeships, with our civil engineering graduate apprenticeships being the first to ever finish in Scotland this year, graduating with honours degrees. Our construction and built environment curriculum runs right through from entry level, further education through to masters and beyond. And for businesses, we have a dedicated business solutions advisor for each sector who provide a single point of contact for, for employers. That enables them to access a wide range of funded programmes and hopefully just hide some of the wiring involved in the bureaucracy, sometimes attached to government funded programmes. In terms of our role in the Make It Smart Hub, our role is to arrange and to host events at Inverness College and other partner camp campuses, as well as on the employer site. We can provide access to demonstrations for employers and for apprentices with technical support from our expert technicians. And uh, hopefully very shortly, within the next few months, we'll be purchasing a five axis CNC machine and associated robotic equipment. Equipment which employers have told us um, over, over recent years that they would like to access. We'll also be purchasing some immersive technology equipment, essentially a sawmill simulator, which will be hosted initially at BSW Timber in Fort William. We're very much looking forward to working with CSIC and local companies on this exciting project. Over to Andrew. We got the uh, first poll on the screen. So please can you answer, where are you considering making changes in your business over the coming 18 months? Five answers there and you have 30 seconds to reply and then the result will come up. Adopting new technology, adopting or increasing manufacturing, construction, R&D, training skills or none of these. So there we see the answers and uh, I would say just looking swiftly down there we've got two prominent answers there adopting new technology and training skills so thank you for that there'll be two more polls coming up lately so now I'm delighted to introduce perhaps quite a familiar figure to the area Stephen Hutchin Steve Stephen is the acting regional head of uh, Oh, Stephen is the acting regional head of technology and innovation with the Highlands and Islands Enterprise. He is responsible for leading HIE's activity in manufacturing, innovation, digital, and the Northern Innovation Hub. Over to you, Stephen. Hi, thank you very much for that, Andrew. So, yeah, I've been asked to talk just a little bit about the challenges uh, and opportunities. Uh, for the Highlands and Islands. So uh, I've prepared a few slides and I'm conscious there's quite a lot of information on them. 
Uh, it's, it's also quite hard in this digital world. Uh, you can see me, but I can't see you, so I've got no idea um, uh, if it's going down well or not. But there's a, there's opportunity for questions at the end. So if you have any questions, please just ask, and I'll, I'll do my best to answer them at, at, at the appropriate time. OK, so the uh, Scottish economic context. This year's been a year really like uh, any, unlike any other. Uh, and what we're seeing is, you know, uh, a d decline in GDP uh, nationally by around about 9.8%. Uh, so quite, quite um, a, a large and uh, sort of preempting maybe one of Andrew's questions for later on. Uh, you know, the, they see the the ac activity sort of getting back to, to pre-crisis levels by the end of 2023. Different people have different opinions on that. And I think it, it, it just depends how long things go on. What's most important? Important for, for this kind of talk is a uh, construction sector 9.4% uh, contraction and a uh, uh, production a uh, uh, 5.6 so quite quite large. What does that mean for for the Highlands and Islands? Um, we've you know we've more of our businesses are SMEs so they're smaller they tend to be more uh, impacted. Uh, our GDPs uh, forecast to decline by slightly more than the the uh, it's a national figure, so between 11 and 19 percent. So that that's um, really quite large. Uh, and I think probably one of the the, the figures, and, and, and leading on a bit from what Georgie was saying about apprenticeships, uh, is youth unemployment between February and September rose from 4.1 to 9.1 percent. That's that's quite a uh, um, concerning in an area where where we already have challenges sometimes keeping our young people. Uh, and you know it's so that you know we're we're really in a time of change. A uh, you know huge economic shock. Um, there's a lot of businesses you see there. 79 percent uh, have, have decreased in their their uh, business confidence. But what we're also seeing is that 75 percent are fairly uh, confident about their future viability. Uh, the we're we're one of the areas that are most impacted by COVID, uh, and also we've got that uh, big B word that uh, you know that everybody's you know not really been looking at when we've been dealing with COVID. But um, Brexit is is you know very much now on the horizon. Uh, so construction sector most affected by COVID, uh, food and drink, aquaculture, creative industries uh, affected by uh, Brexit, and manufacturing again um, by COVID. Long-term impacts that we see, um, potential economic scarring uh, and loss of productive capacity. So when we lose uh, potentially some manufacturers, that may be them gone uh, forever. Uh, we're certainly seeing its um, impact and uh, sort of confidence to take some forward some projects. Other projects are still happening uh, and, and prospects for young people uh, down. We are seeing demand for staff, unsurprisingly, in healthcare, personal care, uh, business service sec and public sector. Um, we're increasing demand for digital skills, both technical and some of the softer skills, um, and, and multi-skilled staff and things in tourism. Also, you've probably seen quite a lot in the press around uh, opportunities for remote and home working, and uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about the the, Inver the the house market around Inverness booming and so on, but just what that means, uh, particularly some of the outlying areas where we have challenges with housing anyway. This, I just put this up as a, a bit of fun, really. This was the, these were the challenges tw sort of 12 months ago. Uh, you know, we're, we're a remote area, uh, inhospitable climate, you know, all of the usual ones, they're still all there. We just have Brexit and COVID layered on top of those now uh, in focus and attention. Our area, uh, 500,000 people, uh, 12 people per square kilometre. Scottish uh, average is about 67, UK average is about 250. So, you know, our sparsely populate, populated area. Uh, our businesses tend to be slightly smaller. Uh, so 7.2 uh, employees uh, rather than 10. 0.9 in, in Scotland and turnover roughly half. Scotland's about 1.5 million per business. Uh, our turnover per business is about 850,000. That's averaged across all of them. Okay, so sectors of employment that are important for us. Um, manufacturing, significantly more important uh, to the Highlands uh, and Islands area than it is to the rest of Scotland. We've got about 17% of our uh, workforce employed in manufacturing compared to 9%. 
uh, construction slightly more uh, important than it, uh, for for the Highlands than it is for the rest of Scotland at 6.2 percent, and unsurprisingly, agriculture, forestry, and fishing at 11.5 percent. So, all of those areas uh, where this project will will make a difference. Uh, and then again, you know, unsurprisingly, a uh, sort of the the business and professional services we tend to be uh, slightly lower than the national average. Uh, this graph just shows that again. So you'll see there manufacturing and construction, both of those showing employment in our area slightly higher than uh, the Scottish average. Uh, so productivity and why is it important? Well, this is a graph from the Scottish Government. It shows uh, Scottish productivity is towards the bottom of the second quartile. Um, why is that important? It's a measure of gross domestic product. So effectively, that's how much uh, is, is generated prior per employee hour. Quite a crude measure, but it's, it's the way that uh, governments measure the, the producti productivity of their, their, their uh, economy. Uh, and and we're, we're towards the bottom, well, bottom, uh, bottom of the first half of that. Why is it important? Well, more productive. If we can get back up to, to around the top quartile, uh, that means that uh, our businesses are more productive. If the businesses are more productive, that generally means that the businesses are more profitable. So that's good for the business owners. If businesses are more profitable, they generally pay higher wages. That's important for the employees. And if, uh, if businesses are more profitable and people are earning higher wages, that's good for the government because that means that there's uh, more taxes. So that's that's the kind of the driver. It's it's kind of a win-win-win. Uh, for everybody in terms of increasing productivity. When you start to look into a bit in a bit more depth, you'll see that we've got our workforce skills uh, are some of the best in the world. So we've got a good we've got a good skills base. We've got well well skilled employees. The terms of trade in this country are are, are pretty good. We're, we're above average in that. That that may be a, a way to change. You know we we have to see what happens with Brexit and potentially what deals. Uh, are done there, and, and how that impacts um, the the economy, and and actually also you know what's going on uh, more widely in the global economy, uh, and how how uh, co uh, countries are responding to that. Um, but the the, the big uh, factor there is this one: uh, capital stock, and that's investment by both private and public sector. Uh, and infrastructure. So that's why a project like this is important, and that's why the Scottish government are investing so much money around manufacturing with National Manufacturing Institute of Scotland, with the um, various AMCF projects across Scotland and the innovation centres, uh, is to, to to provide from the public sector side, to provide more infrastructure to help um, businesses uh, innovate and to help them implement new technology and find new ways of working uh, and develop new products, uh, and, and then to, to reduce the risk for, for businesses to make that investment. So a, re, uh, a recovery, a, a regional perspective. What the, what does it mean? So you know, th this is just a kind of a generic slide for high. But I think the the key things in there uh, around the increased use of digital technology and e-commerce, uh, innovation, particularly in, in the areas of manufacturing, construction, use of timber, how we add uh, more value, uh, and how we use things like digital to reduce the issues that we have around uh, remoteness and peripherality and connectivity. So a, a presentation like this in the past, we'd have been doing this in Inverness. I'd have been standing in front of you speaking. I'm sitting here at home talking to, talk, talking to my computer. Um, so how, how do we use that? How do we make sure that we are, we're more connected? Uh, and how do we make sure that we're, we influence policy, that we, we, we see the opportunities coming up? Uh, I think the the this current situation, we've we've seen change happen very, very quickly, uh, b both good and bad. We've seen companies respond. A year ago, something like um, you know, when you rounded it to the nearest figure, zero percent of the PPE used in Scotland by the NHS was made in Scotland. This year, in some areas, it'll be around 50 percent uh, of the the PPE. Now that probably won't continue, but there will be PPE uh, made in Scotland going forward. We supported a, a, a wedding dress designer uh, with one of our projects, and um, she's now uh, making face masks. You know that's not going to impact 
or that's not going to happen across all of our businesses, but there's there's going to be different opportunities. And it's certainly very much um, we're seeing with the Scottish Government that the focus on manufacturing and the focus on, on recovery, they're looking at how they use things like procurement and so on to, to support economic development. There, there's a lot of talk now about resilient supply chains. What does that mean? That means buying more stuff uh, effectively closer to home so that we don't have some of the the issues that we've seen in the past where, you know, whether it's from a manufacturing side of things or from a food supply side of things, it's uh, it's difficult to get things there. So, and, and lastly, just to finish off, uh, and when, when we talk about this, some of you will be aware of this uh, building. It's the, the, the new uh, Inverness Airport Hotel. Uh, traditionally, that would have been, you know, built, pretty much built on site. Uh, it was manufactured in Poland and assembled uh, in Scotland, so it's just a, um, a, a kind of, I suppose, a metaphor for how how things are changing and how how we see them uh, changing. We would like to see more value added and keep more of the the manufacturing side in our area and in Scotland, and and not see uh, you know buying in things um, from outside the area. That, that's about adding value and and, and keeping as much jobs uh, in the area. So. Okay, that's that's the end of my presentation. Thank you, uh, Stephen. Um, some very enlightening points there. Some uh, a lot of information to digest and some key points to uh, consider. It, it also reminds me to mention that whatever we do in the hub, it's all about preserving the beauty of the landscape that is, is well known in the Highlands and Islands. And uh, whilst we talk about construction, it's not just about new build, it's about renovating and making the best use of existing buildings to, to lower the carbon footprint. I'm now delighted to introduce Claire Campbell. Claire founded Strictly Thistle Scotland in 2015. Um, it is the only top leading mill in the Highland region of Scotland. Claire has created a business that gives people around the world an emotive experience and to weave their own piece of history through the spoke and designs and products. So over to you, Claire, which and I think this is probably going to be the most entertaining part of the uh, the webinar. <laughs> no pressure there then. <laughs> a magic trick. But um, no, thank you, Andy, um, for introducing me and thank you for um, allowing me to be part of this um, inaugural webinar and the launch of the Make It Smart Hub for the Highlands and Islands. So um, we were tasked um, as businesses um, who are fully supportive of this um, sort of strategy and initiative with Scotland across the National Manufacturing Institute to just talk about a bit of our success, opportunities, some solutions, and then um, a thought-provoking comment to leave. So just for anybody that's not heard about us, so um, my name is Claire Campbell and I'm the founder of a company called Frickle Frickle. So as it stands and things change on a daily basis for us, um, we, we specialise in bespoke tartan design and um, fabric um, manufacturing, but we realise that we we are not just a tartan company. We're really a brand that embraces um, and supports change and, and those changes that are really fundamental to the fabric of, of the planet, which is you know the environment, but also every single person living on it. So, so we've become quite... Um, in, um, rebellious in nature in our, our mission to really um, have that integrity and justice for, for planet and people. And we do it all under the guise of tartan. And you can go back and do the whole history thing. But the one thing that's really important, I think, that we we started our business on that is that it's fundamental to your values and your identity, tartan fabric. And it really empowers you to stand up for the things that you really believe in. So there's, there's the, the kind of segue uh, connection on it. But yeah, so our success is that I, you know, me and my team um, probably did something that most people back in 2017, when I realised actually one of the next um, step for the business was to um, become a textiles weaver, was to set up a mill in a region that is iconic around the world for Highland Race um, and bring it back. Um, really challenging back in 2017 to raise funding. So we did crowdfunding failed in our first um, go at it but what it did was it really reached um, a global audience but I think it really proved the value or the commitment we had to never giving up and really um, being passionate about this and, and um, 
so we went back and all of these things are on our website if you're ever bored one evening jump on pricklythistlescotland.com and you can check out all our videos but so our success is that we've probably done things that most people think would have been impossible or why bother um but we've we've really restored a method of manufacturing that i feel really proud of which is goes really stands against this mass consumption mass manufactured mass um waste producing planet that we're in and really it's about um it's what you're making and now not how quick you're making it and um, who's made it what materials are involved so so that is a little bit about um us and our success and if danielle can share the first film you'll just get a little insight to um yeah, about our be the change mission so if danielle can bring that up for everyone hopefully you can hear um We came into this with this vision to build a mill and to regenerate the skills and bring beautiful equipment like this back to life, which actually was built to last centuries. To look forward, we have to look backward. It's looking at the impact it's having on the environment. It's looking at the, the rate of consumption and is it necessary? We're using far more native fibres, so that's plant and animal fibres. We have this commitment to a Made in Scotland product. Create quality because quality is a given. No one expects anything that's not quality these days. Hopefully this will be part of a movement where people then think, actually, do you know what, somebody spent 10 hours making that. We have been very, very lucky in terms of who we've been able to get in. It's about making a difference. Okay, so hopefully you managed to um hear that as well as see it and just give you a little insight into our journey over the last couple of years here in the Highlands in what we call a pop-up mill. Um, not very movable, but it's it's temporary. So the opportunities in terms of manufacturing and the Highlands is, is more about actually a responsibility um, as I see it. And it's really about the fabric of the planet and, and understanding how the elephant in the room is textiles. You know, every car we drive, plane we're on, house we sit in, you know, you want to talk about climate manufacturing of any of these bigger pieces, there's fabric in it all. They're, you're wearing fabric. Um, and not many people realise how um, detrimental it is to the planet. And not many people realise actually how much modern slavery is still intrinsic to that industry for you to be able to buy your next t-shirt at the same time. Um, so the opportunity is a responsibility. And I'm bringing it back to the Highlands, you know, we're iconic on a global stage for this form of fabric. And really, not many people realise that in the 1830s in Scotland, seven out of 10 people employed in this country were involved in textiles. So here we are, a fabric, fabric producing nation where we've got the fabric of the planet that seriously needs to be mended in many, many ways. So as I say, you'll see some of these older looms in there. We've got one that's nearly 100 years old. And this, for me, is really important that we use this method of manufacturing because of its statement against mass manufacturing. You know, creating more materials cheaper, faster is not the solution. Um, it's just creating more waste. Um, but also, it's really important to understand the relevance of that method of manufacturing in terms of the jobs it creates. So this is labour intensive ways of manufacturing. This is a job creating way. And many industries through the Industrial Revolution have thought about how can we use digital as a form of reducing our payroll costs. And that's a problem going forward. And it's even more, and you know, it's acute right now for everyone with this whole pandemic. So, you know, for us, the sustainable development goals, which have all been agreed by the nation to, to achieve in 2030, number one is end poverty. And this is my my passion right now is to push that forward and make people think about we don't need to produce more cheaper so that people can afford it. You know, and this is really sort of um, evident in the fast fashion world is actually 
you know, everyone should have the same income to be able to access the same things. You know, pre maybe have less jobs, it's not taking somebody out of poverty. You know, if they're having to buy cheap clothes, how are they heating their home? What quality of food are they able to access to their, you know, the quality of their life? So it's in poverty and, and manufacturers should not feel compelled to come up with a way of making it cheaper. Um, so, you know, one brand that we really sort of aspire to be is a Patagonia for Scotland. You know, so if anyone's heard of them or hasn't, go and have a look and, and see what they're about. Um, and the solution really is, you know, I think Scotland has got an opportunity to step up in this in this area and recognising that looking back is definitely um, looking forward right now. So if I can play with Danielle, it just shows some of the, the work that we're looking to do in the next few years. So if Danielle can bring that up. Dirty green, the impassable Changing faces in the crowd Lies turn to dust The sun turns to rust and to the ground They say he doesn't have a heart Cause it's made with broken parts And through the fiery red The words that he said coming on Go on, go and tell your fathers Warn your sons and daughters Trouble's rising up, trouble's rising Great, thank you, Danielle. So yeah, so sort of then sort of dipping back into this opportunity and solution, I think you know one thing I've become acutely aware of, and, and this is something that Stephen touched on, and I'm, I'm very proud that we've committed wholly where we can, if it exists in Scotland, we use um, and but more than that, I think it's really thinking about the circular economy, it's thinking about the raw materials, it's thinking about repurposing the recycling, it's you know being resourceful, maybe in the Highlands with those kind of numbers where we're very spread out, we don't have, you know, everything on our doorstep. We, we by nature, we're more resourceful. We waste not, want not attitude. Um, and it's really becoming, you know, kind of the um, a kind of core thread to our business and what we um, communicate and message and trying to inspire people who follow us on social media. And you know, social media is not just we actually have customers all over the world. I mean, most of our customers Ninety-five percent of our customers are not based in Scotland, not even the UK, um, but they become value. Um, they become you know, really sort of important because of what we stand for and the values, and we recognise that. And even though we're so huge, we're part of a global um, planet is one small stage. There might just be a bigger stretch of water between us uh, and the next neighbour, but we all we all um, live and breathe the same air essentially. So. Our solution is really seeing how the Highlands can actually step up and become this, you know, world leading, resourceful, innovative as well. But remembering innovation can lead to destruction, destruction when you become so focused on creating something new. You know, looking back, you know, as I said, is, is for me looking forward. Mm -hmm. um, and so for manufacturing, one of the other things that, you know, we've become quite a um, key part of our strategy and how we and how we develop our business and how we map out what we're going to do in the next five years is making sure that not everything we produce is a single issue solution. Um, so we're you know for us it's really looking at how we can be create the most relevant resourceful products for customers that don't just solve one issue and, and do the kind of clever marketing this is the thing you need for that one problem. It's really you know encouraging people to become more problem solvers themselves. Um, 
and then really avoiding this kind of silo um silo mindset in the highlands and challenging you know what is the most opportune you know the the sector with the most opportunity you know we see food and drink in the highlands and i'm really relieved to see Stephen. you know obviously manufacturing is a big part up in the highlands not just construction so i'm really pleased to be here as a non-construction manufacturer but that you know through agriculture as well and it's for me it's always been something that's perplexed me because this textiles is not my background um, it's actually finance is that you know sometimes by creating silos and boxes around things actually is isolating industries or businesses systems processes from each other so we need to be more circular in our thinking so it's really challenging what was perceived as the most efficient way of developing a region or a country or an economy because really thinking that silos are you know by putting boxes around things is actually more detrimental so we try to champion that in terms of what we do and the projects that we're looking at behind the scenes natural fibers plant fibers and um, we've got thousands of tons worth of wool in scotland that's exported to india for carpets we're doing nothing with it because we can't make a thick hair thin well 2020 we're we're on the case and working that out um and and then really it's just understanding um how for us and, and what will um, support manufacturing going forward and see you know see the, the the developments that we want the job creations but also the respect to the planet is we are highly aware as a manufacturer that our consumers fund everything um, and we want them to know that they're funding you know the right decisions that we make so it's been really transparent and you know and we know that they are then buying based on their values so this is one thing or a couple of statements I can throw out to everybody and you know it applies to every sector and I know we're here talking about manufacturing but you know we, we have the powers and the pound and the dollar and the euro and as consumers and as manufacturers you need to understand that you know consumers are going to become to the future they're not going to fund slavery you know you have to be transparent about that you can't hide it if you're hiding it there's there's for me there's a guilty hanger on your door you know, and, and consumers will no longer fund planet destroying methods of manufacturing. Um, so for me, it's it's really, you know, it's, it's definitely about but it's about make it matter and make it better. Um, and that's what we want to do as a small brand on the Highlands, using an amazing history and battles and Highland clearances and, and all of these things, but showing that we can be a brand that really recognizes our responsibility in the world stage and we can do it from the highlands you know we're so connected now with um, with digital um platforms then you know you you can you can be you know the exact same person in any country around the world so yeah so make it smart but make it matter is what's what we say so if i could hand back to um andy to do the next bit i believe and thank you all for um listening Thank you very much, Claire. I always find it inspirational listening to you. You know that. Um, oh, and thank you. you reminded me also. <laughs> you reminded me also that we're we're keen to work with businesses who um, uh, are keen to protect the planet, protect the environment, and and join in the local uh, circular economy. We keep promising us this circular economy. So, whatever we can do to connect construction and manufacturing together, we're all for it. Um, I believe now it's time for the next poll to to come up so if we see the next poll please so what is the biggest challenge to the construction or manufacturing sector in the highlands and islands and again you've got 30 seconds to answer and then the results will come up so is it the premium costs of the environment complex procurement rules for large projects lack of private sector investment lack of affordable housing or being relatively risk averse and issues of quality and delivery. I'll just wait for the uh, results to feed through. So here we are, um, and a couple of answers that look to be ahead of the rest. Premium costs of remote rural harsh environments and uh, 
complex procurement rules for large projects. Interestingly, when, if, you, if you listen on the 25th, we will be talking about procurement rules, sorry, procurement models for modular construction. So possibly address that at that stage. Okay, thank you for your answers to that poll. I'm now delighted to um, introduce our final guest speaker. Um, Matt Stevenson founded Carbon Dynamic 10 years ago with a mission of delivering social, environmental, and industry impact through focusing on sustainable circular economy principles. During the last 12 months, Matt founded Ecosystems to focus on timber and digital innovation with a strong focus on the development of homegrown timber. Um, I'll also add that Matt is the only person I know mad enough to drive from Inverness to Hamilton to see us at CSIC twice in the same week. Um, our, our free lunches are good, but I don't think they're that good. But over to you, Matt, for your presentation. Great, thanks, Andrew. Um, probably got the train. Uh, would tend to try and prefer to do that, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's always worth making it down to, to Hamilton, although. Uh, it's been a while. Um, uh, great to follow on also for, from from Claire, who you know, you know, big fan of the the work that she's doing, and I, I would absolutely um, sort of reinforce the enthusiasm that uh, that Claire's just expressed for for, for working in Highland. Um, I think it's a massive privilege to to be able to to to, to work um, from up here, and you know, we, in terms of what I'm going to talk about, you know, we've got a rich heritage of. Uh, design and manufacture from from Highland in for specifically for the construction industry. Uh, we've got the likes of Macar south of Inverness, um, uh, our house over in, in Sky. There's um, uh, Bernard Planterose up up by Allapool, the, the guys at North Scott up in Caithness. Um, we've got you know just some some really innovative work that that, that, that comes from and stems from Highland and, and of course uh, Carbon Dynamic, who were uh, based up uh, by Ian Gordon, who as as Andrew noted, I founded about 10, 10 years ago, who continue to to do some uh, fantastic work from up there. Um, so focusing specifically on on ecosystems and uh, and what 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 we're uh, what we're about. Um, Ecosystems is a uh, innovative prop tech company uh, led by experienced sector professionals uh, and we're dedicated to digital transformation of the construction industry, to applied innovation in timber technology and the democratization of low energy, sustainable and healthy building solutions. So that's, you know, it's, it, it's those three pillars that enable us to, to address those, those three concerns that Andrew noted of delivering social, environmental, and industry impact um, and you know uh, we, we, we're very well placed uh, within Highland to do that uh, let me let me take you on a little sort of a whistle stop tour of some of the stuff that we're involved with so uh, Synergy um, is a is another uh, business which I've co-founded um, delivering uh, uh, community developments uh, future of living everything wrapped into a subscription model uh, no car ownership, all, all, all electric vehicles uh, under a sort of shared mobility uh, sort of basis, um, shared uh, shared um, energy, uh, the communal uh, renewables and communal battery storage. Now we are delighted to be uh, to be manufacturing a a two bed duplex demonstrator uh for a a sample uh two two bed unit for for that synergy product now excitingly that is going to be manufactured um from entirely from uh, the, the structural shells can be uh, manufactured entirely from uh homegrown timber uh engineered products um so the walls um of the unit are going to be homegrown cross laminated timber the ceiling uh is going to be a a nail laminated uh timber panel uh, nailed with timber nails, wooden nails. Um, the floors are going to be glue laminated timber panels, and uh, and this uh, this sort of portal frame uh, in the in the middle of the unit is a glue laminated timber portal, which we're uh, evolving as a new product into the market, and uh, we've got a. Uh, uh, an intern who's uh, who's just working that up, having uh, developed it initially for for her thesis, um, Agatha, and uh, and we're working collaboratively with uh, Napier University to create the full digital twin of this unit, um, and with Construction Scotland Innovation Centre to to manufacture it. So the all these uh, homegrown tin products will be manufactured at the Innovation Centre in Hamilton, and will then assemble that unit. So uh, really exciting project. 
And what we want that to serve as is a catalyst for being able to commercially manufacture CLT uh, in Scotland and specifically, you know, to deliver that from Highland. We're, we're blessed with, uh, you know, really good natural resource, uh, great human capital, uh, you know, where better to, to deliver that from. Um, in tandem with that, we're developing some, you know, other other timber, homegrown timber engineered solutions. So, you know, within Highland, you know, there's 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 a there's a need for industrial buildings as there is throughout the the UK. Um, so we we're looking to evolve um, a Belfast truss um, build system which can achieve 30 meter clear spans. We're looking to to work and collaborate with a company in Wales, Tianus, uh, who are producing the Tianus um, system, which is like a box beam uh, type of system. And actually, we're just currently working on a hybrid between that and the glue laminated timber portal, which will allow us to do hopefully up to 18, 20 meter uh, spans. Um, and of course, you know the, the the building fabric, the building shell. So you know just important maybe just to take a moment to note um you know there's finally a focus on the value and importance of uh of uh, of car embodied carbon in construction too often you know for ages the focus has been all about uh, um, uh operational carbon and, and operational energy but it's so important the the embodied carbon and embodied energy that goes into a build. If we if we were to invest uh, pounds and euros the way that we uh, expend carbon in putting a building together and uh, rely on the long term return return on investment that comes through operational benefits over over sort of a decade, you know, 20, 30 years, uh, you would never make that financial investment. So really important we invest. Uh, our carbon really wisely and we can do that by uh, sequestering carbon in our build fabric and who doing that uh, you know lock that that carbon into into longer carbon cycles um, as ecosystems we're, we're, we're uh, helping uh, evolve uh, new sister businesses so the off-grid travel company uh, which is going to uh, provide uh, holiday uh, uh, rental accommodation opportunities uh, through Highland, uh, through, through throughout Scotland and in, into Europe, so Lapland, the Carpathian Mountains, Italy, uh, creating you know some fantastic uh, 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 holidaying experiences, uh, perfect uh, antidote to, uh, to 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 COVID. Hopefully, going and, and staying in one of these units. Um, in tandem with that, we're also uh, creating uh, nature spaces, a uh, vehicle to, uh, to offer um, different build solutions in, directly into the market. Uh, key one, uh, again, responding to COVID, is the Near Home project that we're, again, we're collaborating with Construction Scotland Innovation Centre on. Um, this, this project seeks to uh, enable people to, to continue to work uh, close, to, uh, close to home or at home. So, we're developing a, a kit apart solution, all timber, again, all biogenic based. So um, uh, you could have a booth uh, set up in, in an existing part of movement within the house, a pod within the garden, potentially, you know, create uh, hubs in, in, in shared sort of spaces um, so that you can have co-working spaces and, you know, communities of, uh, of these units. So this, you know, these might inhabit green spaces, uh, botanical gardens, uh, different locations, or could be deployed into uh, vacant buildings within town centres. Um, key to this is enabling people to, to to work in the right sort of environment, close to home, uh, negate the the, uh, the transition back to uh, commuting, and uh, and importantly, you know, the, that the, the likely migration to commuting by car again, but rather than by public transport. So. Um, we we want to deliver this, you know, deploying some of our digital capabilities. So, you know, uh, provide people the ability to to select from a 3D library using using you know smartphone or tablet um, to then drop that uh, that that unit in into your garden space or into wherever the location is as an augmented reality model. Uh, orientate it, change it, you know, do live configuration so adjust it to perfectly suit uh, suit the requirements uh, of the space. Uh, we you Know, we'll deploy generative design for manufacturing and assembly um, capabilities into this 
Uh, we want to maximize the potential of digital manufacture. You know, that allows us to, uh, to, to deliver uh, the solution at scale and have maximum impact. And we also, you know, talked about the democratization um, of, of these build processes. Uh, you know, we want to create augmented reality um, uh, assembly guidance. So, you know, somebody could potentially take, take ownership of of um, assembling and installing the unit themselves, so that's a you know great solution for, for, for the, the new normal as we uh, as we emerge hopefully from COVID. Um, there's here's just a few few renders that show you know what what these spaces might look like uh, in different settings. Um, I'll just maybe um, cycle back to this 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 uh, uh, this graphic in the in the middle of the uh, presentation here because. I, I just want to, I guess, reinforce the, the the messaging around, you know, what what we can do within Highland. We've got we've got great digital capabilities. Uh, we've got great manufacturing uh, sort of opportunities. We've got that natural uh, natural capital to, to draw upon. So um, we see a a, a a digital thread, uh, literally from the forest floor. Um, all the way through to to the built asset, and indeed back again. So let's. Say for example, we're, we're manufacturing our um, homegrown cross-laminated timber panel. Well, you know, we can work with with Napier to to understand what the raw material, the characteristics of that raw material, to make sure that actually, it, as we mill it, as we take it from the log, um, we understand how to be get the best yield, how to optimize and get the you know the best uh, the best resulting product out of that. That allows us to add the maximum amount of value lock that resulting product you know into the highest quality product possible and that high quality means you know re retaining that within the carbon cycle lo longer so if we embed that metadata that information about that the raw material at the earliest stage before we've even started to design the product um, then the, the product responds to those material characteristics that means we can design the best most efficient product possible and you know we we everything is simulated virtually before we before we actually start manufacturing so you know from from that virtual product that's you know really mature mature design we then go into a sort of virtual manufacturing process and you know that that can involve um you know our, our ability to rehearse so you know we could we could pre-assemble in virtual reality um the, the the product before we produce it we can we can start to you know see how it would look on site and how how stuff would go together so you know we can we can really uh, really understand and create and remove all all the ambiguity about what the product is before it's uh, before it's even built we then we then obviously transition into the physical manufacturing so you know how how do we make that process as efficient as possible? We've got all that productivity sort of data already sort of baked in, so that we're we're creating uh, a, a you know a a real uh, smooth and efficient manufacturing process. We we can again use augmented reality, so that we've got a physical uh, uh, and digital digital overlay on our physical piece of work that's been done. We can have a fantastic audit trail. We know that quality assurance is 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 really sort of uh, built in from the from the get go. Um, and then of course you know we have a, the the resulting building product, um, the physical asset uh, which we deliver to site, and we can we can try you know uh, trial the. The install process before actually doing it everybody knows what to expect health and safety is maximized um, but but beyond that you know and this is where ordinarily you know the building's delivered that's it you know hopefully you don't get called back at the end of defects period uh, job done um, but what we see is the most exciting part of all this is that the resulting uh, physical asset is matched with a digital asset and that digital asset is endures for the for the same lifespan as the building and informs how that's maintained operated and uh, uh, get, there's a constant feedback loop and it means you know that if in the future we want to repurpose a building that we've got all the information and the intelligence to be able to do that um, that extends the, uh, the 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 workable life of, of that initial sort of de design and delivery um, the, the, the product should last, you know, decades, you know, 60, 100 uh, plus years. Um, uh, but beyond that, um, you know, because right back at the beginning, we've understood and designed for manufacturing and assembly, um, we, we, we know uh, that at the 
end of life of it as a building we can disassemble that put it back into the into the industry and we've still maintained that carbon locked into that carbon cycle for even longer so i hope as a snapshot that gives you a bit of a sense of what we're about the journey we hope to go on in the in the next couple of years um, and just what an impact we can have from Highland, from a digital, carbon, environmental, social um, and industry impact perspective. Thanks very much. Thanks, Matt. Um, another inspirational talk from a, another successful business person based in the Highlands and Islands. And we are grateful to Max, I understand he has literally got out of his sick bed to uh, to present to us today so sterling effort again um it's now going to be time to put up the uh, next and final poll question so which of these is most important to your business um access advanced manufacturing equipment ideas on how to be more innovative training skills for you or your workforce connectivity with innovation expertise of suppliers or support on R&D projects. And again, we've got 30 seconds before the results are shown. Whilst you're doing that, um, I've been asked to, to inform you that if you wish to register for the webinar on modular construction on the 25th, can you please wait for an email for this? We'll send out an email to all attendees to let you know more information about that. So the results are in on the late, last poll and um, We've got one or two ahead there. The main one seems to be training skills for your workforce to be more innovative. So that's something we can follow up on, I, I am sure. So thank you for that, uh, uh, that poll and, and all your answers to the poll questions. It's now time for the question and answer sessions. And we've got about three or four questions that we're gonna go through. So uh, just wait for everybody to, uh, all the, uh, um, contributors to make themselves present whilst I'll get up the uh, first question. Um, I'm going to ask first of all, it's been said that the economic recovery um, following the pandemic may actually take one to two years to take place. So in that time, um, what changes do you see happening in the islands and islands in that time? Um, Stephen, you've already touched on this, but perhaps you just want to give us another sentence or two just to uh, underline what you said. Yeah, so th thanks, Andrew. Um, I think, you know, how, how do I see it going? I think, it, that, you know, there, there's a lot of talk about how, you know, how long the, the recovery was. And, and in my presentation, I said, you know, we see it out to about 2023 till things start to get back to normal. But of, of course, they're not going to go back to normal. It's going to be a new normal. So, you know, what does that look like? Um, I think there's there's understanding probably some some key trends. So again, as I said in my presentation, I think it's about accelerating um, accelerating sort of digital digital adoption, and it's about finding new routes to market. So, you know, we recently helped a company that uh, used to do or, or does tutoring for primary school kids. Now that was done face to face. That business trialled pre-COVID uh, some digital stuff, and now has effectively moved to, to digital delivery. And of course, you know, as as as, Ma as Matt was saying, and as Claire said, you know, that move to digital allows them to interact with a with with a, a customer base that instead of just being in the Highlands and Islands or that that can uh, travel to you. It, it it now becomes global, and and you'll have seen other projects like uh, Isle Twenty, which is a uh, it's basically craft makers over on the west coast and the islands uh, have set up a, a, a basically a marketplace that allows them to, to 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 interact globally so i think that's it's about um it's about digitization and increase in digitization i think low carbon is going to be a huge thing and as as matt said it's about how we choose to spend um our carbon and and how we how we add value to timber that's 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 grown in in, in the country, um, and I think that's possibly the, the the final thing. Again, as Claire was saying, buying habits are changing. Customers are, are becoming far more conscious about things, but but that's happening as well at government level. So how supply chains work, who you who you buy from, and how you buy from from them, 
I, th I think will change. And probably the, you know, I think I'd be a fool if I tried to predict what will happen. But the only thing I think I would have any confidence in saying is that the next few years there will be more change. So it, it's about making sure that your fleet of foot and that you are keeping an eye on what's changing and thinking about how you might respond to it because I, I don't think the change is, is going to stop. Thanks, Stephen. Um, I'll, ask, I'll ask the others to contribute, but if you could keep your answers um, short, we are running out a bit of time. So, uh, how about you, Georgie? Do you want to have a quick go next? Yeah, thanks, Andrew. I suppose my thoughts are that um, I think the, the travel and tourism sector will be one of the first to bounce back. But you'll also understand that construction and, and, and manufacturing are holding up quite well, I think, compared to perhaps other areas of Scotland. Um, so certainly in the construction sector, we're seeing huge demand for skills, huge demand for labour. Um, and long may that continue. Um, but similarly, some, some different skills and new skills in, in the engineering sector, which is going to be a challenge for us to be able to deliver and being involved in projects like AMCF is one of the ways that, that we'll be able to do that. Thanks, Georgie. How about you next, Claire? Got you on mute, Claire, I think. Oh, sorry, Danielle's unmuted me there. Um, I think, you know, in terms of what the next couple of years will mean, and I think, you know, regardless of anything that's happening in the world, and I know we are, you know, kind of, you know, this is historical, the situation, but I think, the future is what you'll make it. And I think, you know, if you're prepared to share the message and have those grounding values of what you believe in um, and, and that will make a difference, I think anything is possible. So, I mean, we are we come from a place of being, you know, hugely optimistic. But I think if you have the ability to be emotionally intelligent, what's happening in the world, it's not just the person on the high street. This is somebody in another country, you know, um, and I think it doesn't need to be all doom and gloom. I think you know this is a chance for people to really assess what is important in their lifetime, but also the great great grandchildren that have yet to come. So I think I think it's a, an exciting um, couple of years because I think it will encourage those people who are who are who have the courage and don't have fear of change and fear of failure. You have to try these things, and and some things were broken. I think that's obvious now, and um, yeah, it's going forward with courage and commitment. So I think. The Highlands can step up. Thanks, Claire. And then finally, over to you, Matt. No, great. Cheers. Um, yeah, I'd be pretty punchy about uh, what we can uh, what we can hope for in the next couple of years. You know, I, I thought 2020 has uh, sort of seen it as a year of convergence. It didn't quite ex anticipate some of what's come about in 2020. But in spite of that, actually, you know, all you know, so many of the right conditions to enable uh, a, a collaborative approach to really innovating in the, in the space of uh, low carbon construction energy efficient construction you know it's all there to to to, to be delivered on uh you know i i i would i would expect to see us be in a position where we're creating homegrown mass timber products where we're, we're uh, delivering that into the market in a really mature way where you know we're delivering for the needs of uh, of highlands and islands you know as you know Stephen noted you know so that more more of that required product is is able to be procured within highland um and uh, and exporting out with highland both uh, both product and and knowledge and and, and capability um so yeah i'd be uh, really really positive about what the future looks like okay um thanks matt so um, I'm probably going to pick, pick on you again uh, next, Matt, for this next question and possibly uh, Stephen afterwards. Sure. Um, and the question is simply this. Is there enough forestry growing now in Scotland to feed increased demand for timber mm -hmm. in the future? Um, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the easy answer to that is probably yes. Um, the, the, the more complex uh, answer is um, is yes. And, you know, what, you know, I, I think what, what we've got an opportunity to do is, is to, to deliver more of the resulting volume of, of, uh, of sawn timber product, you know, into a further up the value chain and further up the, you know, the carbon chain. Um, so that's that's you know that's our that's our trick and and in terms of a you know a, you know a, a circular approach you know uh, re really inform what you know what future planting uh, uh, regimes look like we need to plant more trees you know and and of course you know there's there's a lead in time on those trees 
coming ready for harvest but you know if we're smart and if we, you know if we take a, an an informed approach and if you know we use the the, the 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 knowledge and capabilities that exist within you know our timber science scientists uh, within scotland we can get get the most, best yield out of that product that's available to us Thanks, yeah, Matt. I would, um, Stephen, I don't know if you've got a, a view on this. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I do have um, a, a view on it. I think I think it's a it's a really interesting question. Uh, you know, Scotland's a net exporter of timber products. UK is the third largest importer of timber products in the world. So, uh, you know, Scotland's we're in a, a pretty good position. I think the question, though, is there's two sides. So there's 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 one, you know, about growing more timber uh, and how that, um, you know, contributes to our climate change uh, targets and so on. But I think the, the, probably the most pertinent question is how do we get the most value out of the timber that we grow? So you know that, and that's about how do we manage woods? How do we see um, woodland as not just being commercial or uh, you know, sort of for for environment and landscape purposes, but how do you actually get the 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 most value uh, as a society? So, you know, whether that's um, you putting uh, Scotch pine into higher value markets, whether that's windows or things like cross laminated timber. Uh, if we do cross laminated timber, how do you add more value to that? Um, you know, it, can you charge a premium if it's clad with Scotch pine uh, or if it's um, larch rather than Siberian larch? I think uh, so. I think it's how do we add as much value as we can to what we've got, and what are the opportunities for Scotland to maybe export to other parts of the UK? Great, thanks, Stephen. Um, I'm going to turn to you again, Stephen, in a moment for this question. How can the Highlands Council Building Standards team get involved um, with with the with the intention to raise levels of compliance with building standards and regulations? So that's a really good question. I think Matt touches on it around uh, some of the uh, the some of his presentation around digitisation, and I think that's going to be that as the Scottish government looks to you know something like fifty percent of uh, all uh, all construction spend in Scotland that comes through the, the public sector. So how how does the public sector get smarter about uh, making sure that uh, that that we the, the the public sector gets the change that it wants, uh, you know, from from its um, from its spend. Uh, I think you know that would be very much about enga like engaging and um, as as Matt has said, things like digital twins and so on. You know, do will building standards need to go on site in the future to inspect buildings? If you can prove that it's been built. To um, to standard digitally, at, at what point um, will that be acceptable? Uh, you know, we see that you know we see, and there's been well publicised cases in the past where maybe building standards haven't been followed uh, with some of the schools' contracts and things like that. So, I would expect you'll see change there, and it'll be how do we get value from both sides? So, how does it make it better, more efficient uh, for the public sector and getting what we want, and how do we control it? And also for 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 the private sector, how do they prove that what they're doing is is to the the standard or to the quality? Thanks, Stephen. Um, Matt, do you want to say something? Yeah, just, mindful of time, I'll be, be brief. But I would just say that you know, building control at uh, Highland Council, you know, have been very uh, very proactive uh, in the past and continue to be in terms of digital uh, engagement and adoption. You know, uh, Frank Doherty, so you know. Uh, led, led on, on on some of that earlier work in terms of digitising the process, and uh, you know the project that we're we're looking to deliver with CSIC for that prototype. Um, we're we're talking about routes to using that as a template for trialling some of that sort of di those digital processes for uh, uh, for visiting uh, remote you know remote visit and and signing off on things. So you know excited yeah, excited to to see where that can go, and and great to have that level of engagement uh, in Highland. Thanks, Matt. Uh, I'm going to wrap up the questions now with one more. Um, it is a good question, this. How important will it be for companies across the different sectors to share experiences and from across different geographical boundaries to make the hub a success? Um, I'll ask you, Georgie, first. 
Andrew, I think it's absolutely essential that that, that happens. Um, and I think only by um, taking the expertise from one sector in, in, into another can we learn. So in many cases, the expertise is out there. It just exists in other sectors. And I think Matt showed in, in his demonstration today some of the ways that other sectors can start to think about the circular economy, for instance. So, so yeah, I think it's absolutely essential. Um, it's, it's essential, I think, though, for the hub to make that a success rather than to make the hub a success. So, uh, so I think we've got a challenge on our hands to encourage collaboration, whether that be um, digital at the moment or face to face. And uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that the, um, the Inverness College and the UHI partnership will be able to work together to be, to be a conduit for that in the Highlands. Thanks, Georgie. Um, I'll, I'll move to you, Claire, for an answer on this one. Yeah, no, I just want to, you know, uh, just, you know, in terms of collaborations and cross sector and using the, the Smart Hub to um, really sort of encourage creativity, you know, the things that we're working on is very different to construction, but everybody's sitting on a chair in a house that actually has a fabric on it. But going to the circular economy, you know, what we're working on for its single, its first use, you know, everyone knows how um, incredibly um, insulative wool is. So the opportunities to work with all of these natural fibres in, in the Highlands and not look to really sort of mine virgin fibres on a regular basis. So we can repurpose and reuse materials from one sector to another on a regular basis. And to be able to work together in the, in the Highlands as sharing the processes and, and taking processes um, you know, into something that's never been done before. I think there's a real opportunity there to show that we can be very circular together and we all work with natural materials that can have different forms at different phases. So I think, you know, to have a hub like this to show that when you've got people who are driven enough and, and committed enough to make it work, then put them in a room together or virtually like this and they will make it happen all to benefit the economy of the region, but also thinking about the responsibility to the next generation. Thanks, Claire. I, I'm going to wrap up the question, the question and answer session there. Um, so brilliant questions and definitely some brilliant answers as well so thank you experts for your insights and presenting today and uh, no doubt we'll be hearing from you in, in due course again hopefully on a similar platform to this one um, and, and thank you audience for joining i hope you found it insightful and uh, feeling inspired to join in the journey with us we thank you for your questions and hope to look forward to working with you um, in the future your feedback on this and future events is most welcome. Um, so please complete the feedback form. And uh, please also look at the chat for some links to further information um, involving the participants today. And just a polite reminder that to, uh, to register for the, the website, please wait for a um, email to come out from us. It could be today, it could be tomorrow for that. So uh, we're just working through a couple of things there. but. Um, Excellent. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for participating, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.